My guest today is Michael Michel. Michael, how are you doing? Hi, how are you, David? I'm doing great. What do you do, Michael? I am a Microsoft technical trainer. Mm -hmm. I work for Worldwide Learning, so I teach development and uh, development classes, data scientist classes, and also uh, machine learning classes. That well. sounds like a lot yeah. of fun. Yes, it is. Um, I love I, it. I don't have a confession. Like, I don't really know that much about machining learning, yes. machine learning and data science, yeah. but, uh, but you do. Yes, You I actually do. teach it. <laughs> yes. And we want to talk about that today. We want to talk about uh, something you brought up uh, called re reinforcement learning. Is reinforcement that? learning, exactly. What is that? Reinforcement learning is, a, you can think of it as a division of machine learning, where we think about supervised and supervised, and then we have our reinforcement learning. Okay. In reinforcement learning, our goal is to train an agent, it can be a game or can be even you know carried on to some real life example, like okay. driving a car. Right. So a reinforcement agent is an agent that is going to be learn, learning by exploring the environment. And whenever they do something good, you're reinforcing them by a reward. Oh. So that way they what learn. What kind of a reward does an agent get? Usually the reward is kind of like a, you know, you think about it as if you're doing something good, I'm going to give you a higher score okay. in the game, for example. If you are driving safely in the middle of the lines, then you get also a higher score. Okay. And then based on those scores, you want the agent to always try to maximize that score with every step of the time. I see. So the agent's motivation is to maximize the score. That's built exactly. into the, the, the software of the agent itself. Exactly. Uh, but what's not really built in, what's more kind of, uh, I think of is the ambiguity of machine learning. Yes. You know, it's, all, it's, it's, it's sort of some randomness to it, yes. is what happens to it and what, what behaviors get reinforced. It, the, the, exactly. Because when, when you think about an agent that's learning from the environment, like for example, if I want to train an agent to drive a car, um, yeah. I can't just have them drive safely all the time because then they would just learn one way and if something right. goes wrong, they will not know what to do. Right. So you'll have to simulate all those different things where like, okay, you're going to go off the road, then you're going to lose points. And when you're driving good, you're, you're gaining. When you're stopping at the stop sign, you get more points. Uh, I see. And then maybe uh, how do they handle unexpected situations? Exactly. Somebody runs out in front of the car. Exactly. Example. So you want it to stop. You would want, you'd want them to stop. Reinforce stopping. Exactly. Uh, negatively reinforced crashing into that person. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, very cool. Now, what, what kind of tools do you use for this? For for reinforcement learning, for reinforcement learning, the the most important thing to have is to be able to uh, you know train a neural network. Okay. So deep neural networks. Those are the so you use algorithms and you use different types of um, uh, different 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 types of framework. So that you will be able to build those algorithms, uh, th sorry, to build those neural networks and train them effectively. The issue here is that neural networks in general are are computationally expensive. Yeah. So you will need monetarily expensive as exactly, well. Exactly, exactly. Especially when you are training something like autonomous driving, because you need images. Images are expensive in in, in you know, computationally expensive because yeah. they are huge and framework and all that pre-processing that you do. So you need machines that will support that. So you need GPUs, CPUs, you need very powerful environments. It used to be you had to own a supercomputer. Exactly. There's only, only universities and big research centers. Exactly. That. But not now. Not anymore. Now yes. we can use... We can use Azure. Uh, we can use the exactly. Cloud. We, can use, we can, can use Azure for, Azure for that. <laughs> yes. And Azure does support reinforcement learning where we will be able to train different models and optimize even the training. We can compare multiple models at the same time and we can choose because you think about it is I want to train my environment to maximize the reward and how long can I wait you know for some applications I want to train the agent and I want to wait a week for other applications I cannot wait that long I want to wait shorter so now you're thinking about the size of your compute cluster that you can reserve and run on Azure. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. What um other than just the compute clusters, are there specific services within Azure that we can use to do this? Currently, Azure does have a framework that we can use, the Ray framework, where it will provide you with a lot of tools that simplifies the process of creating and running this distribution workload of, of your, your Azure. This is a framework that we write code around? Is that, yes. That sort of thing, like an Pretty SDK? Much. Yes. What's, uh, what languages? Uh, mainly Python. Okay. 
So is this something we just said uh, new service and then go run with it, or is it something we have to deploy a virtual machine, deploy the framework? Are there multiple steps to it? Exactly, there's multiple steps to it. So you will have to deploy the uh, machine learning environment. You have to build the workspace. So you have to choose your compute clusters. Mm -hmm. And then you are going to choose whether you want to run, for example, Jupyter Notebooks. Mm -hmm. And then you build on that all the steps that you want to do. Okay, so it's not still non-trivial. You still have a lot of work to do. Exactly. But it's, it's, uh, it's easier and cheaper than the old days. Exactly. Now, the, the thing that I also like about machine learning and the cloud is machine learning and almost any data science, it typically takes a lot of compute, as you mentioned, exactly. but not all day, every day. Building those models is when you're going to be crunching in, uh, those numbers and spending exactly. a lot of money. Exactly. Renting exactly. is better. Yes. Buying exactly. Case. Are there other use cases for this? I yes. mean, self-driving cars is a big one right now, but what else can we use it for? Now, reinforcement learning can also be utilized in a lot of different areas. One interesting use for it is as a personalizer or a recommendation system. So, you know, you watch your movies, I will recommend based on what you've seen. And if you like it, I'll give oh. you rewards and continue to do okay. so. Okay, you like this crappy movie, you probably like these other three or four <laughs> exactly. crappy movies as well. Yes. <laughs> this guy is a crappy movie fan. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. Um, so we can do that there. The reinforcement learning can train on both ways, where we can have an active learning, so every time you're doing, you, 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 you take the agent into the real environment and it learns as it goes. Okay. But also we do passive learning where we can simulate a lot of those learning. So instead of um, I can take your history, for example, I can either learn from your history what you've been watching for the past year and recommend on it. Or I can be start the agent clean as it knows nothing. And then as you choose your data, it's going to actively learn it from you. You mentioned the real, uh, real scenarios. I'm, I'm reminded there was a, a bot that was trained. I think this is a reinforcement learning. Yes. Was, to, was trained to tweet like a human. Yeah. So it looked at other tweets, tweeted like that, and after a while, it uh, well, the people that designed it didn't realize that a lot of the tweets out there are just nasty, <laughs> racist <laughs> douchebags <laughs> on the internet, and so it became yeah, a nasty, yeah. racist douchebag because true. it was just emulated. Yep. The, the, it was that was was being reinforced, yes. and they had to shut it down. Yes, for that reason. That sounds like reinforcement learning, but, Definitely. but going wrong. Exactly, <laughs> that's AI abused. <laughs> is, uh, is there a way to prevent that sort of thing? Well, the the main you know approach to preventing that way is by actively understanding how the model is working okay. and monitoring it you know responsible ai is right there having to look at you know understanding how is it being rewarded especially in in automated learning because there is the concept of the gan right generative and and, and descrip descriptor uh, networks where I am going to generate the data and the descriptor is going to look at that data. Does it look real? Because it compares it with real data. Right. So I have to control that descriptor and add all my rules, the safeguards that I want. Like, you know, for example, remove profanity or remove something that is inappropriate so that it will not, it will, it will reward it with negative or no reward so yeah. that it will start, uh, you yeah, know, that was the problem. It out. In this particular case, it was uh, the rewards were for emulating real world exactly. behavior. Well, real behavior isn't always no nope. positive thing. I, I read a book about a year ago. Was, have you read this book? It's called You Look Like a Thing and I Love You. <laughs> no. So it was all about, Tell me about uh, it. machine learning gone wrong. Yeah. And a lot of it, I think, had to do with reinforcement learning, but it was examples of, you know, you, you try to train something to uh, a robot to mm -hmm. move the fastest between two points. Yes. And that's the goal. And that's what you reinforce. Well, the robot, after trial and error, discovered that it's falling over. <laughs> the, the top of it reached the goal yeah. a lot faster. Well, that's not really helpful in exactly, designing exactly. a robot. So things like that. Yes. And even the, you look like a thing and I love you was a, I think it was trying to emulate the, the, um, the chat on a dating site with a bot that sounded yeah. like a dating site. <laughs> you know, I've heard a lot of those stories because as, as you said, if you don't control what the, the, uh, the reinforcement agent is going to learn, it is going to try to maximize the reward, even right. if it's impossible, right? So if it's, if it's just like you said, if, if it only reached the tip off or it just falls over or if it crashes because it's not slowing down from point one to right. point B, that's, there's no safeguards that can do that. Exactly, yeah. Are you doing any projects right now with reinforcement yes. learning? 
Yes, I'm doing um, a small project where I am training uh, multiple uh, agents so that they will be able to navigate a certain terrain you know, and get from point A to point B. Okay. Um, the idea here is I'm doing the multi-agent reinforcement learning, which is a very nice area as well, where they can be two agents that are cooperative working together. Oh, so they try to maximize each other, uh, you know, reward. That sounds complex. It is, it does, because when it comes to, if there is two doors, and I want each one of us to exit from one door, if we are not working together, we I might be going to the further one from me, and you might be going to the further one from you. We might crash in the middle. So we have to kind of like learn how to co cooperate in the area. It's an interesting problem. Yes. Um, what if, if people want to learn more about this, where's a good place to go? One of the interesting places that will contain a lot of information about machine learning and about AI, especially what we can do on Azure is the Microsoft Learn. So we do have a lot of modules over there around machine learning and also we have several uh, uh, demos where you can implement something like Pong. So you can train an agent oh, to Pong, play the old Pong. Video game. Yes, Pong, that Pong. is exactly <laughs> that one. So you can train the agent to play it and get a really good score. Interesting. Well, Michael, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a lot of friends and a lot of technology. <laughs> don't we want some technological friends? I don't know. I don't know. That's good? That's good. <laughs>